I was born into this world as a nano-augmented human, designed to be the ultimate weapon against the Illuminati's schemes. My life was a series of augmentations, missions, and betrayals. I have seen things that would make most men's blood run cold, but I remained focused on my goals. As I walked through the streets of the city, my augmented senses picked up every detail, every sound, every smell. The world was a blur of colors and shapes, but I could see through it all, focus on what was important. My mission. My thoughts were interrupted by a group of street performers, dressed in strange costumes and playing exotic instruments. Their music was foreign, yet oddly familiar, and I found myself captivated by their performance. For a moment, I forgot about my mission, forgot about the world outside of this street corner. But then I remembered. My mission was not just a job, it was a calling. A duty to protect humanity from those who would seek to control it. I could not let my guard down, not even for a moment. I continued on my way, passing by people from all walks of life, each with their own stories and struggles. It was a surreal experience, yet it felt grounded in reality. This was the world I lived in. A world of corruption, intrigue, and danger. But it was also a world of hope. Of people fighting for what was right, even in the face of overwhelming odds. As I approached my destination, a secret laboratory hidden deep underground, I prepared myself for the mission ahead. My augmentations would give me an edge, but I knew that I could not rely on them alone. I needed to use my wits, my training, and my instincts to succeed. I descended into the laboratory, passing by armed guards and high-tech security measures. But I was undaunted. I had been here before. I knew the layout. I knew the enemies I would face. And so I moved through the facility like a ghost, taking out guards and hacking into computers with ease. My mission was to retrieve a powerful weapon that the Illuminati was trying to obtain. But as I reached the weapon's location, I found something unexpected. The weapon was not a machine, a device, or a piece of technology. It was a child, a young girl, barely old enough to walk. She looked up at me with wide, innocent eyes, and I knew in that moment that my mission had changed. I could not let the Illuminati use this child as a weapon, as a pawn in their schemes. I could not let them corrupt her, twist her into something she was not. And so I took the child with me, risking everything to protect her. As I emerged from the laboratory, the child in my arms, I knew that my life would never be the same. I had gone from being a weapon of the Illuminati to a protector of the innocent. And while the world around me remained surreal and strange, I knew that I was grounded in reality, fighting for what was right in a world of chaos and corruption. The Star Wars series, eh? A cultural phenomenon to be sure. But I have to admit, I've never really seen the appeal. I mean, what's so great about it? A group of rebels fighting against an oppressive empire. Sounds familiar. But unlike real life in this universe, the rebels always come out on top, and the bad guys are always defeated with little effort. And let's talk about the Jedi. Supposedly the guardians of peace and justice, but they spend most of their time talking about their connection to some magical energy field. It's also... flimsy. But what really bothers me is how easily people get caught up in it all. They spend their time arguing over who shot first, or whether or not the prequels were any good. Meanwhile, the real world is falling apart around them. It's like they're looking for some kind of escape, some kind of distraction from the problems of their own lives. But I prefer to face those problems head on, to confront the challenges of the real world instead of retreating into a fantasy universe. That's why I don't care for Star Wars. It's just another form of escapism, and I've never been one to run away from a fight. My people would willingly eat something that wasn't even remotely delicious. I mean, if you're going to consume something, it might as well be enjoyable, right? I've always been a fan of tasty food. It's one of the reasons I don't eat at Unaco cafeterias. Their food is all about nutrition and not taste. It's like they don't even care about the enjoyment factor. And then there's the whole conspiracy with the food industry. I've seen what goes on behind closed doors, and it's not pretty. Corporations using addictive chemicals to keep people coming back for more, manipulating food to make it cheaper and easier to produce, and disregarding the health of the consumers. It's a sad state of affairs, really, but at least I know that when I eat something, it's going to be yummy. And that's worth more than any nutrition label could ever say. I have to admit, I find myself drawn to Minecraft. It may seem simple on the surface, but beneath that pixelated exterior lies a world of possibilities. The ability to shape the environment to my will, to explore its depths and uncover its secrets, it's all quite exhilarating. In a world where everything seems so predetermined, Minecraft offers a refreshing sense of freedom. I can choose to build a towering fortress or a humble cottage. I can wander aimlessly or set out on a grand adventure. The choice is mine, and that's a rarity in today's society. But there's more to it than just the gameplay mechanics. 
Minecraft allows me to express my creativity in ways that my augmentations simply cannot. I can build to my heart's content without worrying about mission objectives or political ramifications. It's a form of escapism, yes, but in a way that is both fulfilling and healthy. And let's not forget the community. The sheer number of people who have poured countless hours into building and sharing their creations is nothing short of remarkable. It's a testament to the game's enduring appeal, and I am proud to be a part of it. So, in short, I love Minecraft for its sense of freedom, creativity, and community. It's a world where the possibilities are endless, and that's something that we could all use a little more of in our lives. As an augmented agent, I often find myself surrounded by complex systems and intense situations that require utmost focus and analytical skills. However, there is one thing that always manages to make me smile and provides a sense of joy and wonder, SpongeBob SquarePants. I find his lighthearted and carefree attitude to be a refreshing contrast to the often grim and serious world I inhabit. His antics and adventures in the underwater city of Bikini Bottom are a welcome respite from the weight of my responsibilities. And when he exclaims, I'm a goofy goober, with that infectious grin of his, it never fails to bring a genuine smile to my face. It's a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always room for humor and a bit of silliness. Perhaps it's the childlike wonder and innocence of SpongeBob that resonates with me. Or maybe it's just the fact that sometimes it's nice to let loose and be a bit of a goofy goober myself. Regardless, I am grateful for the joy that SpongeBob and his friends bring into my life, and I'm proud to be a fan of the lovable sponge who is indeed a goofy goober through and through. I remember a week ago, I had to fight off three big wooden doors. It may sound like a trivial matter to the uninitiated, but those who have been in my line of work know better. These doors were reinforced with steel and designed to withstand a bomb blast, but that wasn't enough to stop me. I had to use all my strength and training to pry them open. It wasn't easy, but I managed to get through. I knew I had to keep going, no matter what obstacles were thrown in my way. That's just how it is in this line of work. As I stood there catching my breath, I couldn't help but think about the countless other doors I had to face in the past. Each one was a challenge, but I overcame them all. It's all about determination and having the right tools at your disposal. In the end, it was just another day on the job, but it was a reminder that in this line of work, anything can happen. You have to be ready for anything and everything, even if that means fighting off three big wooden doors. The Bible is an interesting collection of stories and beliefs, but it is not a reliable source of truth. Its teachings are often contradictory, and it has been used throughout history to justify both good and evil actions. I prefer to rely on reason and evidence to guide my beliefs and actions, rather than blindly following the words of a book written centuries ago. That being said, I respect the beliefs of others who choose to find meaning and guidance in the Bible or any other religious text. We all have the freedom to choose our own path, as long as it does not harm others.